So what is going on everybody? Welcome to your 16th Android application development tutorial. My name is Mehul and in this tutorial I'm gonna show you something about on touch listener. Now in the last tutorial we took a look at what on click listener was but on click kind of fires when you lift your finger from the particular element which you were targeting. So let's say you created an on click listener for this button right there so on an actual device what will happen is that when you just tap on this button and lift your finger up then that particular event would fire well that might be something you want or might not be well in most cases you would like to have some more functionality associated with it like you want to know when the user touched the screen and uh, you know how the user is moving his or her finger on the screen so as accordingly you could place the elements or you know perform certain actions you want to so for that you need to make use of something known as an on touch listener so this on touch listener just like on create we could create that on a button but uh, let's create that on relative layout right so we could just get the touch on the layout in itself instead of just on a view so that we can work with these buttons later on as well so obviously I would need to first of all give it an ID Android ID here we go let's just say this is my layout and let me just copy this so that it's easy to access now what I'm gonna say right here is private my layout or basically this should be private relative layout my layout uh, let's just set it to null for now and as you can see it automatically imported that for me now I want to create my layout equals find view by ID r dot ID dot my layout and I need to type cast it explicitly to a relative layout and find view by ID so now we have my layout inside uh, my layout variable only so that is kind of similar name so I need to set on touch listener right so I need to set an on touch listener now so new on touch listener and uh, here we go so IDE is doing some code work for us and uh, just auto completed all that stuff so I'm just gonna explain that what is happening here so what is happening is that uh, set on touch listener just like set on click listener was would accept an constructor which would then call this function so on touch there are a couple of differences the first one is that on click didn't have a return type but it does it has a boolean return type and I'll just show you why so on touch has a return type and it accepts another argument which is motion event and trust me you're gonna love this if you like to play around with elements on screen because motion event is something which would you know give you a lot of power and uh, you know this is this kind of event this argument would be used a lot in like if you are creating interactive applications or like even in games you want to place an element where the user is touching the finger on the screen so this is kinda that kind of stuff so what I want to do right now is I want to say that toast dot make text get application context and uh, I was touched and uh, then I want to say that this is toast dot length shot so obviously you know that it would just show me that I was touched but uh, I need to set it to return true first now why the heck do we need return type for on touch well this happens something like this so you pressed you you know you just started an on touch on the layout right and let's say you have on touch for this button as well and for layout as well so obviously if you just imagine a little bit you would immediately recognize that this button is 
over this layout so just try to think in three dimensions so this button is placed over this screen film which is the layout so that is why this button kind of appears to you so if you have an on touch event for that particular button as well you don't want to mix these events so what happens is that when you return true from an on touch listener then it tells android pretty much that you have handled the event and you don't want other propagation to occur like you don't want android to listen for or supply any sort of data to other events other similar events right so what happens is uh, that uh, let's just leave that so what i was telling you is that uh, on touch would kind of fire for your layout and uh, then if you return false from this then it won't fire actually because it would fire but uh, android will not supply the future data for to this event and uh, what i'm saying would be clear to you in a minute so let's just first of all let me show you how this application looks like right so it would be kind of simple just like on click but it would rapidly fire this event again and again and again and again unless you just you know just return false from that particular event or you know you lift your finger up so that just destroys this on touch listener event so i just changed this device to galaxy s5 in case you were wondering just in case so let it build the application first for us and Uh, looks like we are done so here we go and uh, if I touch on this layout you would see that this immediately popped up now the reason is that I am NOT touching the screen but the toast are still appearing is because toast kinda cache up in the memory because they cannot just pop up all at once so this would just appear the number of times this event was fired and pretty much it would be I don't know if you just slide your finger it fires a lot of times so you know you don't need to worry about memory and all that stuff and it would take care of that <clears throat> so I need to show you a little bit better application than this so what I'm gonna do is let's pick this button right so it has an ID of uh, ID of let's just say lucky ID because this is a lucky button because we picked it from the three so you can say that uh, let's just create this button reference private button lucky ID is null right and make sure to import that and lucky ID is a button and find view by ID r dot ID dot lucky ID right and uh, <coughs> what I'm gonna do next is something interesting so I'm gonna say that uh, first of all let me create two variables as well float X and float Y and you will just understand in a moment why I did that you could just name them private as well if you want to so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say X equals <coughs> event dot get x right and y equals event dot get y all right now what i want to have actually what i have in these two variables is that i have the x and y coordinates of where your finger is so if you have place your finger right here so I have the X and the Y coordinates of your finger right so now I have pretty much I know my application my code knows that where are you touching for the moment and uh, using these values you could actually you know determine even if you are sliding up your finger in a particular time interval or sliding down sliding right sliding diagonal and you know whatever 
you want to know about that event so what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say lucky ID dot set X X and lucky ID dot set Y as Y now what these events are they are pretty simple to understand what the set X does is that it would set the coordinates of this button right here which was our lucky ID button to the X coordinate which I'm passing right here which in our case would be the coordinate of our finger and the reason I named it as a float variable instead of int is obviously clear that you could have coordinates in decimals as well so this application would kind of work but what I want to show you about is that there's something known as motion event actions so I'm gonna say if event dot get action now what it's gonna do is it's gonna return me what type of action is being performed by the finger of the user right so I'm gonna say this is motion event dot and now you can see that all of these actions right here you have right so for now I'm just gonna show you about action down action up and uh, this button press button release then we have let me just see where is it action move right so what is gonna happen is that this event would rapidly fire as long as you are moving your finger so what happens is that sometimes you don't need to fire an event when the finger just lands on the screen or you don't need to fire an event when the finger is moving on the screen you just need to fire it on the landing of the finger and just when you are taking off finger from the screen so for that particular event what you'll make use of is motion event dot action down and action down would you know I know that a lot of guys confuse this action down with sliding down or sliding up but actually what action down means is that you just you know made your finger touch the screen and action up obviously means the opposite so this action moves means that you are actually moving your finger on the screen so as long as you are moving the finger on the screen set this coordinates of the button as follows now you might have guessed by now what this code would do this code would actually pretty much make the button the lucky ID button follow your finger on the screen so make sure to return true right here and if you don't do that what would happen is that Android would not pass any future information about action move to your particular event so if you say like return false from here then Android would say that okay if you are not interested in handling the event for finger moving on your relative layout then don't worry I got other resources to manage so Android would probably not provide intro uh, you know it would not send the event to your particular code block so Right now I'm gonna say true and I'm gonna show you what false does later on so again let's just start our application and let's see how it looks like and here we go so now <clears throat> when I will click on the screen or technically I would when touch this Android emulator then see what happens okay so our lucky button was the first one I, I thought that this one was the lucky button so well anyways so our lucky button is actually following my cursor right if you see there so I'm just moving my cursor and it is a bit slow on the video because of my FPS as well as this is an emulator so it would be technically slower than a real device so you know you get the idea that particularly this is following my mouse cursor because of the Android um, this event right there motion even action move and you see that it stays there when I lift my touch because as soon as I lift my cursor this event is over and then this code does not get called and it kind of retains its X and Y coordinates which were set the last time so 
now check this out what happens if I do something like uh, int i equals 0 and I would say that if plus plus of i is greater than 100 or uh, let me just change it to like 100 or 50 you know any number would work because I'm just gonna say you show you something really cool so I have saved this yes so let's just stop our application and let's see what happens now and why is it red okay so wait a minute um, here we go and here we go again so let's just play our application again and it's kind of run you know this button I just see it on YouTube very often so I often confuse it with play but anyways so now our application is running now pay close attention what is gonna happen so I would start dragging on the screen and you see pretty much everything works nicely as long as I'm drawing this I am you know just kind of drawing circles on the screen now you know that this on touch I told you that it rapidly fires again and again and again and again as long as a touch event is going on so by the time I release this mouse click or technically my finger from this emulator what would happen is that this i plus plus would actually make i the value of i very large larger than zero which we set right here on this line so i is technically very large now and see i'm releasing this button right so it has frozen right here now if i start again my drag doesn't work now now what has happened well what happened is that right here I have said that on touch I want this constructor to fire and this constructor actually fires this function again and again so if I declare this I here then this I would be initialized again and again every time when I touch but since my I is outside this function which is called again and again so that is why when I update I the first time it fires is that it returns true so it says that you know just keep handling that even so on the first go it says to Android that I got this I'm gonna handle this event trust on me and all that you know stuff which would make Android you know Android would obey your instructions for this so what happens when you release the button well when you release the button Android suddenly destroys this event right but the I the value of I is still very large than 50 right so it is by the time I have released that it would be in thousands or you know tens of thousands so what happened is that on the next event it run like this but it saw this code right here so it sent me that if I plus plus or plus plus i is greater than 50 and return false now once this was encountered an Android know, knew that uh, you know I'm just not gonna send any further calls for this event the action move to your event because you just said that you're not gonna handle this it's not your job so and that is how pretty much Android would decide whether to send that particular event to your on touch function or some other on touch function so right here if you return true then your event would be fired and none of the other event would be fired which would have you know kind of the same functionality implemented but if you return false then your event won't be fired you are out of the league and pretty much you know you just said to Android that I'm not gonna handle this event and uh, yeah so that's pretty much it that's this code does so you could just pretty much do amazing stuff with this code and with motion event you get a lot of other tons of other options and uh, we're gonna make use of motion event in future video tutorials but uh, for this video tutorial that's it I guess and pretty much and if you like this tutorial then don't forget to subscribe um, thank you for watching I'll see you then in the next one